even though it will cause some anxiety and disruption to those students who will be sitting CXC exams at the Cape and CSEC levels on the nomination and election days, from reports yesterday, yesterday's announcement triggered spontaneous rejoicing across the island. Barbadians are done with them and are looking to make a fresh start under new leadership. The past 10 years under the Dems have been tough for the vast majority of our citizens. Our once thriving economy plum plummeted into decline largely due to mismanagement, incompetence, and a striking failure of leadership. The high standard of public services fell despite the imposition of the most punitive tax measures in our nation's history. The Barbadian taxpayer is no longer getting value for money. Potholes have become the order of the day on our roads. For 10 months now, raw sewage has flowed intermittently on the most traveled streets of the South Coast. Instead of fixing the problem, the Prime Minister makes excuses. This outstanding failure of a leader tells us sewage is flowing on the streets of foreign cities too. The hopes of countless young Barbadians have been shattered. The inability to pay tuition fees has deprived them of the opportunity to get the university education. This great act of betrayal by the Dems came after the Prime Minister said making Barbadians pay to attend UB would be a retrograde step. A BLP administration will reintroduce free university education for all students at UB. Additionally, our hard-working public servants have not had a pay increase in 10 years. In the meantime, the cost of living just kept soaring and soaring. You will recall that bringing down prices was job number one, two, and three when the Dems assumed office in 2008. By their many about turns over the last 10 years, the Dems have showed quite clearly that their word is not their bond. It is little wonder that Barbadians are done with them. And see May the 24th, the date of the general elections, as a day of deliverance. The Barbados Labour Party is ready. We have been for several months. We are ready to provide Barbados again with quality leadership and to begin the process of restoring hope to our people. The leadership of Mayor Motley and the BLP is anchored in caring and compassion. Mayor Cares, Team BLP Cares. This contrasts with the repeated display of callousness and contempt on the other side. We will run the government not as some secret society, but in a full and open partnership with the people of Barbados. This partnership will be based on regular consultation, dialogue and respect for each other. Barbadians have repeatedly demonstrated confidence in the Barbados Labour Party. To be specific, in our capacity to manage the economy and to provide a better life for our people. And this confidence is expressed in this often heard comment. When the bees are in power, more money is in circulation and people do better. More money in circulation means more business activity in support of economic growth. After 10 years of virtual stagnation, the Barbados economy needs breathing space to grow again. Beginning with the removal of the crippling NSRL, the policies of the Barbados Labour Party will facilitate economic growth. Sustained economic growth means more opportunities, opportunities for more jobs and a better life overall for our citizens. This is the mission of the Barbados Labour Party. We have delivered Barbados before, we will deliver for Barbados again. The BLP is best for Barbados. Everyone except the most die-hard Dems agrees that Barbados stands today at a crossroads. It is time for serious national discussion. We intend to run a campaign addressing the issues that matter to Barbados. Topping the list, of course, is the economy. The Dems are seeking to run away from serious discussion of the economy. After 10 years in office, they have not made a difference and have nothing to show in this regard. 
we expected them to run a trivial, vile, and salacious campaign. A campaign of distractions to divert public attention from their mismanagement and incompetence. In fact, they have already started with their nastiness. They want to pull wool over the people's eyes, but we will hold their hands to the fire. We will demand accountability from the Dems. Commenting on the sad state of the economy some time ago, former Prime Minister Sir Lloyd Sandiford asked, and I quote, how did we get back here, end of quote. The Dems are yet to provide an answer. They have ignored their former leader. We will press them over the coming four weeks until they tell us how we got back here. And so we embark on this historic mission to rescue Barbados, full of faith and with a determination to make a difference for our people. As you are aware, our party is currently celebrating its 80th anniversary. And the number 80 seems to have special biblical significance. As we were told at the church service to launch our anniversary celebrations, Moses was 80 years old when he was called by God to deliver, deliver the children of Israel from Egyptian bondage. The celebrations will reach a high point tomorrow, National Heroes Day, when we will mark the 120th birthday of our distinguished founder and first leader, the Right Excellence to Grant the Adams. We invite all Barbadians to join us tomorrow for our 11th annual picnic and rally on the East Coast. Both celebrations have provided us with an opportunity to draw inspiration as we reflect on our party's rich history and proud legacy. Indeed, the lessons serve to fortify us as we look ahead to charting a brighter future, fully seizing opportunities along the way and also confronting the challenges. As Campaign 2018 unfolds, we commit to keeping the lines of communication at all times open with the media. You will be kept fully abreast of our events and activities. We will provide regular opportunities for you to interact with our leadership, candidates and officials so that you acquire a clear understanding of our policy platform and agenda for government. We believe the media have a critical role to play in the political process through fair and balanced reporting. We are committed to supporting you in carrying out this important democratic function. In closing, I must reiterate that we are the best party. We have the best team. We have the best leader. We have the best social and economic policies. And we have the best track record. And we are certainly best for Barbados in 2018. We look forward to seeing you at our campaign liftoff on Saturday, the 5th of May at Weymouth at 6 p.m. I assure you, that you will not forget this event. Our post is going up last night, and you'll see across the island. As I said in my speech, we've been preparing for this for quite some time. We know that it could be a minimum of 21 days, and we know it could be 28 days. John, I from the Nation newspaper. You spoke of abolishing the NSRL. You spoke of returning the tertiary education free of cost to students. Against the background of the economic challenges, how do you propose to fund those activities if there is an economic challenge in the country? Our manifesto speaks to this when it is released. It's the time at which we will speak and we will enter the discussions publicly regarding how we propose to do that. As I said, we are launching our campaign on the 5th, and the following week, we will be launching our manifesto. We launch quite early in this campaign so that we can enter into discussion across Barbados in terms of how we want to deal with the economic issues confronting this country. But I'm not going to get into those details today. Um, social media is playing a critical part in the political campaign. Internationally, and clearly Barbados has caught on. Over the past weeks, the party had to apologize for post uh, a t-shirt that was sort of distributed on social media. How are you going to monitor social media, given the fact that it's all fake news in there? How are you going to monitor that? Do you have a First of all, I don't know that the party had to apologize for a t-shirt. The party, I made it clear that the party had no, no t-shirt, had issued no t-shirt, it wasn't an apology. 
it was just clarifying the clarification uh, the area of social media as you said is quite difficult to monitor and as uh, you know you're familiar with it entities could easily put up things under the, the rubric of Barbie's Labour Party and we might not know this, this is the reality it is difficult to mon monitor and indeed difficult to regulate but these are the times we live in and I believe that all parties will try to use the social media as assiduously as possible and effectively. Notwithstanding that you say that you're going to announce in detail your policies at your opening door. Um, at the launch of the manifesto. At the launch of the manifesto. Um, there are a number of issues which are plaguing the populace at this time. Um, can you give me a sort of peek into the BLP's approach to same-sex marriage, the paying of fees for health services, um, first, I'll give you those two. The approach to same sex marriage. marriage is we said in terms of. We, we spoke, we speak because these are policies, these are things which are um, occupying the airwaves. I don't know they occupy the airwaves in terms of same sex marriage. Perhaps some people want to, want to occupy the airwaves. We are quite clear as a party the opposition on that. If you're going into same sex marriage, it requires national debate and a referendum. We are clear on that. That's the BLP's position. In terms of user fees for health services, I think both parties recognize that in the cost of health care keeps escalating. And if you're going to provide health care, there needs to be some national, insu national health insurance scheme. That is what we've been looking at in terms of that. And it speaks to the fact that when you're looking at these schemes, obviously persons who work to fit into these schemes. But it has to be set up in such a way that there are some people in your community who obviously are unable to pay and they must also benefit. So there's something that is not just rushed into and say that you will introduce health fees. And we're looking at in terms of a national health insurance scheme, in terms of health coverage. I believe the current reg regime has also proposed this and there was consultations, national consultations about it. And I don't believe that there's a lot of difference between the in terms of the approach to health sex. I don't know if it's an issue. I certainly haven't heard it on the media. What I've heard is in terms of the chaos that exists at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where basic things cannot be provided, where autoclaves are not working so that instruments cannot be sterilized, and as a result, surgery, only emergency surgeries are being done. I have issues in terms of problems with procurement and not paying the suppliers, and as a result, drugs which are vital and to be utilized, certainly in terms of anesthesia and in, in surgery, are not available or are available in short supplies. As, as a result, the doctors have taken a decision that they're only dealing with emergency surgery. Those are the issues. That is what is on the areas. And that is what the government, which has been there for 10 years, promised in the last, in 2008, how they would change the delivery of healthcare in Barbados. And 10 years later, it has gotten worse. worse. What would be a BLP's policy with respect to a free press? I know that the uh, bill, um, uh, freedom of information, bill has been sitting in the whatever the public service for a while. What would be a BLP's government policy on such a bill? So you heard me what I said about the press and the need for the press and believing in the critical role that the press has to play. Certainly, the BLP would be working all out to encourage the press to practice their trade. Uh, as I said, in a balance, I said that, a balanced approach to it. And I'm sure that the party, I don't know that specifically, I can't remember the whole manifesto of hand, but in approach to the press, it's a more enlightened one, recognizing that the press has its role as the four best state to play, and that it should not necessarily be seen as a, a cuff link or, or appendage of any political party. Whether it be in government or in opposition. So you 